Welcome back. So you're needing a little bit of help with solving rational equations. Let's review what a rational equation is. A rational is a fraction that has polynomials in the top and the bottom. Basically, you're going to see some x's or y's down in the denominator. Remember, when you're trying to solve an equation, you want to get x equals a number, not 1 over x. So that's your obstacle first, is that you have a fraction. So what are the tools that we need in order to solve these? One, how to find the LCD of a rational, which I'm going to show you here in a second. We'll review it. Also, how to distribute, and then how to solve linear and quadratic equations. So once you have all of these in your tool bag, hopefully two and three are there, one we're going to review here in a second, then solving rational equations is just a matter of undoing those obstacles that we've talked about, okay? So least common denominator, often called the LCD, in fancy terms, it's the common multiple of all the denominators. What does that mean to you and I? To you and I? To you and me, too. Yeah, preposition, right? Yeah, doctorate. Anyway, so <coughs> common multiple of all denominators, what does that mean to you and me? It means that every factor in every denominator is going to be seen in that LCD, but we have to be careful. If we just factor everything in the denominator and put them all down, our denominator may be huge, and we don't want that. We want the least, we want the tiniest one. It's easier to work with, easier to multiply, easier to add, whatever we're gonna be doing. So, the warning is to be careful, some of them may overlap. In other words, we might share factors. And I'll give you an example. This is definitely a rational equation. Why? We've got fractions and you have some variables down here in the denominator. That's the bottom. So in order to find the LCD, we want to factor the denominators. Well, these last two fractions are already simplified. We can't factor that any further. We've got the y minus 4 and the y minus 2. This trinomial here, however, can be factored further. So we have a y minus 4 and y minus 2 here. That's actually very nice because it's similar to some of the denominators that we already have. So remember, the LCD has all of those factors represented. So we are going to represent every factor in the denominator, in each denominator, in the LCD. So let's start with the one on the left. So in this denominator here, it includes a y minus 4 and a y minus 2. So we have to have both of them. When we look to this fraction, it just needs a y minus 4. Well, guess what? There's already a y minus 4 there, so we don't have to put another one. Likewise here, this denominator is just a y minus 2, so we already have a y minus 2, so we don't need to put an extra one. That's what I mean by overlapping. Every denominator is represented, okay? This denominator here is shown by both. This denominator here is represented by the first factor, and this denominator here is represented by the second factor. Let me give you a couple more examples that show some of the more common mistakes that I see. Here's one, I've already factored it for you. We have an x plus 4 and x minus 3, but this denominator has two x minus 3s. So when do we need just one x minus 3? When do we need two? Remember, every denominator has to be represented completely. So in this case, we are going to have an x plus 4 from the first one, an x minus 3 from the second one. Then when we look to the last one here, we say, well, it has an x minus 3. Well, the first one already had an x minus 3, but it has a second x minus 3. Therefore, we need a second x minus 3. An easy way to check is to see if you can kind of cover up some of the factors to see if you could see all the denominators. If I cover up the last two, there's my x minus 4 for my first one. If I cover up kind of the outside ones there if I wanted to, there's my x minus 3 from my second one right there. And if I cover up the first one, I can see my last denominator, both x minus 3s. Okay? Also, with the second example here, a common mistake is people go, oh, well, there's an n minus 5 and it already has an n in it, so I don't need this extra n. Good thinking. But this n minus 5 is a factor within itself. n minus 5 is a binomial factor. It's all or nothing. This factor here is a monomial factor. It's a single n. They're two different factors, so both has to be represented. What may help you <coughs> is to go ahead and put parentheses 
around any binomial factor that's already simplified. If you can't go any further, just go ahead and put parentheses around it, and that will remind you it's all or nothing, and everything has to be represented. So the LCD here will include both the monomial n and the binomial n minus 5. So a few things that I want to recall before we do a huge example with the solving. Fractions represent division. Remember your goal is to get x by itself. So if you've got a fraction, in order to get the x's out of the denominator, you have to undo that fraction somehow. You have to get rid of the denominators. So how do we undo division? Multiplication. So that's going to be kind of your, your thought process when you're working through these and you get nervous on a test and you go, oh, I'm frozen, what do I do? You go, I need to get x by itself. I can't get x equals a number as long as that x is in the denominator. It's in the bottom of a fraction. Fraction represents division. Multiplication undoes that division. Think of what gets rid of that obstacle. Last but not least, you cannot divide by zero. That's a long-standing rule. It doesn't change whether you're dealing with uh, numbers in your fractions or variables in your fractions. You cannot divide by zero. So we can't have zero as a denominator. That's going to come in handy when we must check our answers. Okay? Okay, so we're going to do the rational example here on the notepad instead of on the slides because it does take up a little bit more room. So we'll do the steps right here. Factor the denominators. Okay, we'll do a little shorthand here. Now, if you'll notice these last two fractions here, the denominators cannot be factored any further. So sometimes it's helpful to go ahead and put parentheses around it. That way you know you're not going to do anything else with them just yet. However, this trinomial here in the first fraction can be factored into y minus 4, y minus 2. Now, what are we going to do with that? That's going to help us find our LCD that we already talked about. So our LCD here is going to be y minus 4, y minus 2. So if our goal is to get the y by itself, we have fractions, we found the LCD, what are we going to do with that LCD? Well, normally, if we're just adding and subtracting fractions, we want the denominators to be the same so we can add or subtract. So we multiply top and bottom. We do one of these things. The problem is we have an equal sign, okay? Our goal is not to add or combine the fractions. Our goal, really, is to get rid of the fractions. We don't want the variables down here, so we want to undo the fractions. So think fraction means division. That's the operation. Multiplication undoes the division. So we're going to take this LCD and we're going to multiply. So multiply by the LCD. So if we rewrite the first, we have y squared minus y minus 2 over, I'm going to use the factored form on the bottom, y minus 4, y minus 2. And I'm going to multiply that by our LCD, y minus 4, y minus 2. Then I'm going to take the second part, the minus 5 over y minus 4. Multiply that by our LCD. Notice the LCD is going in the numerator in the top because it's understood to be over 1. We're not doing the top and bottom thing. We're just multiplying to reduce the fractions. And then our last piece. Okay, now how does this help us? Well, first of all, let me highlight this just to illustrate. Yes, everybody got the LCD there. Well, now we can reduce and divide out these denominators. Yay, which is kind of our, our goal right now. We don't want these down here. So the y minus 4s divide out to 1, y minus 2s divide out. In the second one, the y minus 4s divide out. And the third one, the y's minus 2 divide out. And so those guys are left. The 3 and the y minus 4 is left. And this guy here is left. So let's rewrite it. We have y squared minus y minus 2 minus 5. We still have the y minus 2 equals 3 times y minus 4. So here... 
In step four, we reduced, so reduce, and we're also going to simplify. So reduce and simplify. It looks like we now have a quadratic equation. So if all of this other here is kind of getting you visually <laughs> disconcerted, um, if, if this is getting a little bit overwhelming, remember you can take a blank piece of paper and cover what you've already worked with so you only see what's left. Okay, give your, give your eyes a little bit of a break. So here we can simplify the left-hand side and the right-hand side. Here on the left, we can distribute y squared minus y minus 2 minus 5y plus 10. We can also distribute here on the right, 3y minus 12. The left-hand side, we have some common terms here, some like terms that we can combine. The negative y and the negative 5y combine. So we have y squared minus 6y. And then the negative 2 plus 10 gives us a plus 8. And the 3y minus 12. Hey. So don't give yourself a headache. I'm going to scroll this down for a second. I'll try to do it slowly. Step five is going to be solve. Now remember, you may have a linear equation. You may have a quadratic equation. Right now, we have a quadratic equation, which means we need to set it equal to zero. So let's go ahead and do that in one step here. We're going to subtract 3y from both sides. And let's go ahead and add 12 to both sides. So that will give us y squared minus 9y plus 20 equals 0. So we have y minus 4y minus 5 equals 0. And then set each of those linear factors equal to 0 and solve. So we can't forget how to solve linear equations or how to solve quadratic equations. They're going to continue to show up. Um, we have a caution here. Our original equation was rational, so we had a fraction, right? What are we not allowed to have in the denominator of a fraction? Zero. Good. We can't divide by zero. It's not allowed. Just like with square roots, we can't take the square root of a negative number. It's not allowed in the real number system. So whenever you have a restriction, we call it a restricted domain, whenever you have a restriction in your original equation, you always must check your answer to be sure that it's allowed, okay? So here you can check your result in the denominator. Remember, we can't have a number over zero, okay? If we come back up here into the original equation, we would be in trouble if we had a 4, because 4 minus 4 would give us a 0 here, or if we had a 2, because it would give us a 0 here. Same thing here. 4 or 2 would give us a 0 in the denominators. So as long as we do not have answers of 4 or 2, we're good. But remember what we had. So we scroll down again. I'll go slowly. Don't want you to get a headache. One of our answers was a 4. That doesn't mean none of them work. It just means we have to not use the 4, so our only solution would be y equals 5. So it's possible you can have two solutions, it's possible you only have one, it's possible you have none, okay? But just double check, make sure it works. Whenever your original equation has restrictions, like fractions or square roots or logarithms, which you'll learn later, you must check your answer. It's always good to check it anyway, just to see how you did, but you must do it. <laughs> when you have one with restrictions, with a restricted domain. Okay, so here's an example that I want you to try on your own. So when you're ready, pause the video, go ahead and try it, and then when you're ready to see how you did and look at the results, then hit play. But try it first. Are you ready? Ready to see how you did? Okay, we need to find the LCD, and in order to do that, we need to factor all of the denominators. This first denominator is already factored, second denominator it's as simplified as it can go. Now the trinomial factors into x minus 6, x plus 3. 
So our LCD, we have to have the first denominator represented, so we have to have an x minus 6. With the second fraction, we have to have that denominator represented of x plus 3. And then luckily, this last fraction has both the x minus 6 and x plus 3, and they're both already represented. Now we need to multiply everybody by that LCD in order to reduce and get rid of those denominators. So we have 5 over x minus 6 times x minus 6 x plus 3 plus 4 over x plus 3 times x minus 6 x plus 3 equaling 4x plus 1 over, and I'll go ahead and do the factored form so we can reduce a little easier, times x minus 6, x plus 3. So remember, everybody got the LCD, equal opportunity mathematician. And then we divide out anything that they have in common. Let's see what is left. In the first one, we have a 5 and the binomial x plus 3. Second, we have the 4 and the binomial x minus 6. And the end of the equal sign, the 4x plus 1. So let's go ahead and simplify. If we distribute, we get 5x plus 15. Distribute the 4, we get 4x minus 24. And then 4x plus 1. Let's go ahead and simplify the left-hand side. We have a 5x and a 4x that we can combine, which gives us a 9x. And then we've got the 15 and the minus 24, which gives us a negative 9 equals 4x plus 1. If we subtract 4x from both sides, Then we will get 5x minus 9 equals 1. Add the 9 to both sides. We get 5x equals 10. Divide both sides by 5, and we get x equals 2. Only one solution here. And as we check back here in the original, if I plug in 2 anywhere in the denominators, I'm not going to get 0 in the denominator. So we're looking good. So how do you feel about solving rational equations? Hopefully a little bit better than when you started. If you got it wrong, don't stress, but go back and figure out where your mistake was, correct it, and get help. Ask your friends, watch more videos, watch this again if you need to. Don't let your pride keep you from passing. You're not alone in this, okay? So have fun, we'll see you soon.